from England. He loves hunting for buried treasure and shooting craps in Vegas. His ideal woman is short, not too liberated, and has a little meat on her bones. Please welcome Brian Coulter. Hi, Brian. How are you? Brian, good morning. Oh, good. Good, Brian. A little meat on her bones, all that kind of stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, Some yeah. Voluptuous. Don't you like uh, slender women? Um, no, I like, um, the, the first girl I ever went on a blind date with, she was so thin, I've seen better bones in soup, and I really didn't enjoy it too much. Really? But my next one was voluptuous, and I've got kind of into the habit of going with, them. Um, voluptuism. Yeah, it's a little short for the weight, at least, you know. Do you allow women around, they said you like to shoot craps in Vegas, do you allow them around when you're yeah, shooting craps? You? Some men don't like that. Well, uh, it's bad luck to be superstitious. Mm -hmm. I usually, uh, like a girl to go, yes, it's, um... It makes me feel better, and usually they win more money than I do. Do they? Yes, damn them. Apparently <laughs> <laughs> we heard that you're looking for a woman whose uh, pilot light hasn't gone out. What does that mean? Well, you know, if, if there's a little spark left, you can always fan it, you know. But if there's no spark, no matter how much you fan it or blow on it, it never... It, you Nothing's know, ever going to erupt. No, you're flogging the dead horse, in other words. <laughs> <laughs> you got a way about you, Brian. Yeah, <laughs> you really do. Let's take a look at the woman that Brian had to choose from now. Audience, watch closely because we're going to ask you to pick the woman that you think's best for him. First, there was Sora. She's from Washington, D.C. She says she's a sensuous Capricorn with marriage on her mind. And uh, she's got a problem with her daughter's boyfriend. A no number of them came on to me, and I just said, you know, hey, you know, you're dating my daughter, and that's it. And if you don't treat her right, you're going to be in for trouble. I just made it a rule that I just would never do anything with her, any of her boyfriends. Okay, next there was Joanna. She's from England, just like Brian is, and in the 21 years since her divorce, she's become pretty set in her ways, but uh, she's not worried. So there's somewhere, somebody, somewhere around for me that's probably set in their ways as well ideally i'd like a romance that um i could live in my place and have him pay all the bills and he could live in his place and we could just go out together that's what i would like. finally watch jan jan always expects expects the worst on a date she's been divorced for 10 years and she thinks it's time to get married again i know that i should be interested in getting married I, I guess i don't look for prospects though and actually i i would like to be married because it seems like it would be very depressing to be old and daughtering all by yourself it would be more fun to daughter with somebody now brian selected one of those women as his date we're going to show you all three women again before you vote first there was sora she's 41 and she's an insurance agent then joanna she's a restaurant manager she's 42 and finally jan she's 40 and she's an employment consultant Okay, audience, it's time for your voting machines. Please make your choice now. Who do you think's the best lady for Brian? <laughs> audience votes recorded. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to meet the woman that Brian selected and hear everything that happened on their date. We're going to do that in just a minute. Hang in there now. <laughs> All righty, we're back. Brian, who did you select? I selected Jam. Jam. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Seen each other since their date. We always hear from both sides. Let's say hello to Jan Johnston. Hi, Jan. Hi, Chuck. How are you, honey? Hi. How you doing? Just fine. Good. What'd you think of Brian when you first met? Well, the first thing that Brian said to me was, um, "Hi, I'm Brian, and I'm five foot." Five and a half. I did not. Why I should I say that? was a funny thing to say. I'm embarrassed about my height. In fact, a lot of girls call me the working girl's Johnny Carson. <laughs> Don't worry, me. Brian has an incredible sense of humor. He's very funny. Yes, he is. I, I, well, to Brian, uh, excuse us for just a moment, Jan. <laughs> Brian, tell us about your date. Well, uh, Jan decided to go to the zoo. The zoo. The zoo, the L.A. Zoo, and she wanted to take some photographers along, these two hotshot photographer friends of hers. Well, I thought maybe it's because she wanted um, a chaperone, but she didn't, because, my God, it was like, you know, sending Dracula to look after the blood bank. I mean, these, this couple was wild. But we went round the zoo, and they... What were they like? Wait a minute. What do you mean, sending Dracula to look after the blood bank? What well, they mean? were kind of wild. I mean, well, just how? kind of quiet and a little bit... Inhibited. How were the photographers wild, though? Oh, they were always acting up, and they, they could see um, naughty things where there was nothing naughty oh. for instance we went out round uh, we, we took an elephant ride and went round with this elephant 
and it made half a circle and went into the middle and this guy got a wheelbarrow out. You see, well, I wonder what the hell's he getting a wheelbarrow out? <laughs> so when he came back, we could see that he, the elephant had relieved himself. <laughs> and I just couldn't figure out how the guy knew that the elephant was um, going yeah, to Yeah, I've obviously himself. got that look in his eye. Uh, he must have done, yes. What happened next? Well, then the after that, I think I wore out going around the zoo. And so uh, we, I took her home and, um, and that was that. <laughs> well, you know, uh, daylight inhibits romance. Well, Jan, you got anything to, uh... <laughs> well, I thought it was a lot more interesting than that. Did you? We had a great time at the zoo. We imitated the animals. I think that's a lot of fun. <laughs> well, that's just fun. I just wanted to show you, tell the highlights. Uh, were you hoping perhaps for a more romantic date with Jan? Well, I don't really, uh, hope too much in advance, you know. I think, like, blessed are they for they expect nothing, for they'll not be disappointed. <laughs> so I wasn't expecting a lot. I never am. And anything that happens is a bonus. But we did have a good time. We were, we were you know, pretty compatible. And it was altogether an enjoyable day. It was an enjoyable experience yes. and certainly not a loss. It certainly wasn't, no. Good. Let's take a look and see who the audience voted for. <laughs> They voted for Jan, too. Well, I want to take the audience's advice. I guess you can ask Jan out again, and uh, we'll pay for it. That's how it works on the show. Well, I, I think there was an X factor missing there. X factor? Which one was that? Uh, it, well, it's hard to explain, you know. You can't pin it down. Mm -hmm. But uh, she's a very beautiful girl, as you yes, can see. Yes, she is. And I can she, see that. She, she's right for a lot of people. But I think if the X factor isn't there, I'd just as soon um, stay home and wash my socks. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's a, very, she's a very pretty girl, though. She really is. Jan, honey, sorry, do you have anything to add to that? Well, it's quite all right. We had a, a very good time, but as Brian said, I don't think that we were meant for each other. Well, I'm sorry things didn't work out, honey. We'll uh, stick you back in our file if that's all right. Oh, fine. We have a nice gift for you. Thanks for coming on the thank show. Thank you. Brian, thank you very much for coming on Love Connection. Thank you. We have a nice gift for you as well. Okay. And uh, we're going to come right back with another couple in just a minute. Stay with us.